man arrested after free climbing London's cheese grater skyscraper. But like with no equipment whatsoever. Yeah, he's just a madman. The weird thing about that, that I think is so crazy. Yeah. It's like, you imagine could just- you have, you I mean, could just, imagine you're having a wank and this guy just rolls past your window. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> There's always a way that he brings it back to some kind of you're sexual like, oh, act. Sorry. It's got me to do wanking. <laughs> Right, so what's the premise of today's podcast? Essentially, if you were, you're going to start a new, uh, you're going to continue humanity, right, on Mars. So you get to start a new civilization and you choose six people to be the, the start of this new human race. This will be the entire cast and crew of Jackass. <laughs> yeah. Thinking that, yeah. Turbo the snail, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Adam. And I'm Josh. And uh, we're back for another loosely orchestrated free exchange of ideas and thoughts beneath the, uh, the murky lens of what we call the Breaking Bread Podcast. Yeah, we've not gone away yet. How's it going, mate? Have you had a good good uh, week doing stuff? I've seen a few of your Instagram stories. Looks like it's been a wild ride. Yeah, oh, it's a wild ride. What about you? Have you? Are you all right? Have you just been what, walking oh, down the canal in... Uh... That's the part where like, yeah, I, I, I do a little bit of coffee and you talk about yourself for three minutes and I pretend like I'm interested. Yes, yeah, so I've, I've just, I've, let's just skip that. Oh, skip Because you don't I give guess. a bollocks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks, for asking, thanks for asking, actually. That's I, thought, I, did, saw, uh, I saw uh, you were watching some uh, cars go around a track somewhere. Meow. Meow. I watched I were at Silverstone watching the British Touring Car Racing Championship, which I didn't know what that really was. Um, yeah. It's basically some fancy... Basically, I could see it, Leon Cooper, uh, with you know a, a wing on the back, I, once crashing when I, into each other. You know, I, work, well, I used to work at the bank, right? And this, one, this one guy, no, the reason I mentioned it is when I think of Silverstone, I was thinking it's one guy, and he used to call like multiple times, but every time he called, he would be like, oh yeah, sorry about that, I'm at Silverstone. <laughs> and I heard this, I mean, like I spoke to this guy three times, I'm thinking, is this like some kind of, is he, like you're trying to impress me by telling me you're watching cars. I'm like, Okay. What do you want to buy today? Oh, nothing. Just want to check some prices yet. What? I could just imagine him sat there like at Silverstone. Like, oh yeah, can I check the price of uh, Barclays shares there? To be fair, you've got up. a lot of time to kill. We were there all day. There's like, there like three races in this British touring car racing and then they were like a Porsche championship and like a mini championship and then like some, another championship. So there were races every 20 minutes, but people sit there, you know, in like a deck chair at the side of the racetrack under an umbrella for 12 hours watching, watching different cars come around the same corner. <laughs> Yeah, I've never understood motor racing. Yeah. I mean, but not to, uh, you know, people can be like, oh, fucking F1 and, and uh, NASCAR is all great. I'm sure it is. <laughs> I'm just saying that I don't oh, really Nas- understand. NASCAR, I can't, I've never watched NASCAR, but imagine that. They're just, they're, well, they're always turning left. It's just a constant know. left turn and it's just a bull. I don't know, having never watched it, I don't know. I know it's it's one, I imagine do, that's what the- Do they all crash into each other though? It's absolute carnage sometimes. If they crash, then you're in for a good day, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I watched, uh, in fact, <laughs> we got Disney Plus recently and we watched uh, a film called Turbo the Snail. And it's about this snail. It's who, total time. Who, 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 was that your choice or the kids? It was the, yeah, it wasn't my choice. But it was definitely your choice. It was actually really good. Um, but long story short, spoiler alert, if anyone wants to watch Turbo the Snail, <laughs> he's, a, he's just a normal snail in a garden. And then he goes into an engine of a car, gets injected with nitrous oxide, and then becomes basically a, a racing snail. And it, hang on, hang and on, it, and he hang wins on. in the no, 500. I've got, and that is the, I swear to God, Adam, that's the only film I've watched in the last six months. That is the only film. <laughs> I've got a real problem with that premise. Somebody was high when, like, the execs were high when they came up with that. See, if you turbocharge the snail, that's the least of the plot's problems. But if you did, <laughs> surely it would just be normal speed because they're notoriously yeah. slow, right? And if you injected a snail with nitrous, I mean, it's, that's not, it's not Fast and Furious, right? It's not a car. It's just going to die. <laughs> no, no, this one didn't. And he made friends with it. Uh, look, anyway, it's a great film. If you've got kids, go watch sure, it. Sure, that's a classic, yeah. <laughs> Put it on your list for later, mate, rather than oh, watching yeah. people setting their dicks on fire. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we're, we're at Silverstone. I had to film some stuff there. Uh, and then, you know... Just uh, been in the gym this morning, getting the old gains. Can you make tell? Us, making some gains. Not yet, but uh, right, we'll get I'm there. sure you'll get there in the end. Yeah. What about you? Bought an house yet? No, not yet. Not yet. How's um, that adventure going to try not ask? Sure. No, I should have asked best not, it's best not to ask. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I've not done anything else. I've quite literally not done Did anything Did you put else. an offer in that, on that house that you went to see? Yeah. Was it accepted or did not? I'm assuming. I, I right. think it's. I think it's a money washing thing. The get the the company just totally doesn't sound like the estate agent doesn't sound real to me. It sounds like you know, like an evil villain's, uh, like overseas <laughs> shell corporation. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I, yeah, it's best not to ask, man. Like, it, suffice to say, I'm not moving yet, and I'm I'm kind of over it. So I'm just gonna stay where I am for 
the fight. I'm, I say I'm, st- I'm going away again soon, and then I'm going to try and get away at least one more time before the end of the year. So it's, you know, like... It's, that's, that's it your, is what it is. That's your answers for everything. Yeah. Um, you may remember on the last part, we'd, we've, we're so out of sync with doing these podcasts, we should have done comments. We'll do comments in a minute. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. uh, you may remember last week I said we've got a sponsor. Do you remember? I did, yeah. I was, I was, we, it was inherently ver- sceptical, naturally. Verbally yeah. agreed, yeah. 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 <laughs> Funnily enough, as soon as I put that podcast out, within, I don't know, an hour... <laughs> That offer was withdrawn. <laughs> it was rescinded. The re- yeah. So. Uh, didn't I actually say on the podcast, because of something you said on that episode, there goes the brand deal. <laughs> As a joke, and there it went. So there goes a thousand pounds that we never Good. had. I'm Bass. fucking glad. I'm fucking glad. <laughs> <laughs> um, George, we're, we're one million views off a of Brucey bonus. He's at nine million views on that video now. <laughs> Even though he didn't agree, and he, he actually completely disagreed with that, I think... We'll keep sort of like prodding the bear. We want, I did um, say if it is your highest viewed video on the channel, there's got to it be It needs to do two more million views then, which I think it's lost its legs now. I think it's peaked. Yeah, but, it, it yeah, but that other video. Legs. Is it joking? It did 700,000 views in the last two hours, which is like a week after, uh, last two days, which is a week after upload. It. That other video that's his most viewed is from two years ago as well. So give it time. Whoa. It will be. It will, will, it will be. It will be, will be like, the most viewed video. I think so. Yeah, it's very, very likely <laughs> to be. It was, a great, it was a great concept for, an, for a video, wasn't it? Which uh, proves I still some, still some life this, in the old yeah, dog yet. Yeah. Well, um, Georgie boy, do this down us, mate. YouTube comments. YouTube. What the fuck with that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> People are like, switching it off, driving into a tree again. YouTube comments, <laughs> let's go. It's time for a YouTube comment from you. Okay, the first comment is from Martin Leach. I wanted to ask Beard if he has any advice for growing a beard. I'm currently 22 and currently being told I look about 15. Gotten to the point where I'm buying a beer, people double check my ID thinking it's fake. and I'm told I've got a baby face. Can't grow a beard to save me life. Martin, Martin, kick back old mate, right? There's nothing wrong with that because when you get to my, like I, I, I had the same thing, right? Believe it or not, <laughs> when I was, when I was younger, I was getting ID'd. Well, I, I, probably still in my late 20s, actually, believe it or not. Um, so I, I don't know why you want to look older when you get old, like if you're old, like me now, like I'm 38, I don't actually look 38, believe it or not. Um, oh, I mean, people tell me, maybe you could tell me, do I look 38? I don't think so. No, no, no it's I really I look deceiving. At, I think I look maybe I, in my I reckon, early 30s. I reckon like within a year though, you're going to turn from like looking all right to looking like that, you know, that meme of that guy that's holding the skateboard over his shoulder. <laughs> Steve Fusemi. Yeah, you're going to look like that. Hello, hello, hello kids. Yeah, that's, that's what you're going to turn into. It's just going to like, that boom, happen, bastard. <laughs> um, so, and my dad was the same, right? So like, the, you want to look young as long as you can, right? Yeah. People pay good money for that, you know, stem cells and Botox, Botox and all that yeah. fucking nonsense. So don't worry about that. But uh, thankfully, growing a beard, uh, the two are not like mutually exclusive. You can grow a beard and still look kind of young. So advi- I mean, I can't really give you any advice uh, other than don't shave, right? It depends if you're genetically gifted. Um, I say gifted. If you have the genetic uh, ability to grow a beard, A, everyone can usually grow a beard of some description, whether it's, you know, a classic Van Dyke or, uh, you know, like something like, a, a, you know, your goatee, ch- even just a chin strap or a full beard like this, um, you can uh, shave more frequently to try and elicit hair growth at your age. What, 22, you said? 22. 22. So you could just try shaving more often, which I know sounds counterintuitive, but at your age, it will it make you more likely to grow hair. But if you can already grow a beard, just let it grow, man. Just stop shaving. Do you think I'd look good with a moustache? Well, I sophist- think you would. Would I look sophisticated? I think it's a fine line. It. Bet- it's a fine yeah. line between. I need to see it to decide. I, I, yeah, it's, it's a fine line between sophistication and sex predator. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always it a, try. a fine line. November's coming up soon. Right? Wait, but perfect time to try it. Yes, I'll, I will do it this year. Sign me up. <laughs> okay, we've got another comment. <laughs> what are you I'm laughing at? Treating you with it. I'm gonna give you a big, powerful ginger mustache. I look like that guy. I look like uh, the fella off Spider Man. The- J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so we should be going for. Or that guy off uh, Gavin and Stacey, Ness's fella. Have you seen it? Don't watch that nonsense. No. Can't stand that. No. <sighs> He's got like a big handlebar ginger moustache. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> um, from t- Another comment from Timmy Tonk. Uh, I think this is on about last week when we were saying that plaque is not an award. <laughs> Fucking hell, is this going on again? <laughs> said, Beard says, an award is not given to you to acknowledge your achievement. It's a prize after people vote for you. Every medal winning Olympian <laughs> rethinking handing their medals back as they aren't awards. <laughs> <laughs> They're not awards, are they? They're medals. 
Which yeah, are, which, which are awards, which are physical indicative. No, an award is something which you are normally nominated for, and then either your peers or the public vote for it. That's not a medal; is something different. That's closer to a medal than an award because it's just a, a physical articulation of an achievement of some kind. Let's not drag it on, man. <laughs> I, yeah, okay, you're right. I'm wrong. I can put this on now then. Okay, another comment from Azza9652. Josh's music taste is that bad, I'd rather <laughs> never listen to music again than listen to one of his playlists. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you there, mate. It's not, it's actually not that bad. It's just, he has some really, there's some really bad things that he likes. I think what it is, but is then that generally I'm it's not all right. scared to say it. Like no. I'm, like I'm not scared to say what I've actually listened to, whereas everybody else would be like blagging it. You know? What's like your biggest guilty pleasure song? Do you think? Don't get him started, man. It's got to be like a machine gu- something by Machine Gun Kelly. I don't, so, I don't, have, a, I don't think I have a guilty pleasure I don't think I, guilty oh, that's his normal pleasure. I don't right? think I have a guilty pleasure song, really. Is there, I anything, like, is there anything you listen to in the car and you go, fucking hell, I'm glad <laughs> no one is here to witness this. <laughs> that's got to be I 90%. think I watched a film a while back and uh, Dolly Parton 9 to 5 was on and I was like, what a fucking banger. <laughs> There's nothing, what's guilt? Dolly Parton was an amazing song. Yeah, but that's, right, what I'm, man. that's like a, that's got to be like a guilty pleasure song, no. right? Why is that guilty? That's, a, that's, that's an accomplished songwriter that you enjoy. Machine Gun Kelly, that's a, that's, you can say that's a guilty pleasure. Yeah, you imagine me rolling around Morley and then like, you know, Dolly Parton. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you, right, there are two you get examples. more respect. <laughs> you're, you're rolling around Morley playing Dolly Parton full yeah. blast or Machine Gun Kelly full blast. From my perspective, the second of those is the worst. But like Machine Gun Kelly is really popular, so I don't understand why you so... What does popularity have to do with... With, with no, but it's like, a, it's like a, an acknowledgement of many people listening to the, the, the artist, right? Surely. We need to just move off Machine Gun <laughs> Kelly entirely. Because I don't want like, I mean, I'm sure his fans are going to get butt hurt, as so, the kids say these days. So but, if you want um, recommendations for music and for television, um, there you too. You've got Dolly Parton, 9 to 5, and you've got Turbo the Snail. I'm not fa- I, 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 I think that's <laughs> such a good summary of like your taste in just everything. <laughs> That's his a weekend. film about a snail <laughs> <laughs> injected with nitrous or something. And Dolly Parton, 9 to 5. Two we worlds go. apart. It's not cohesive, is it? That's what you no. were saying. Uh, we've got one final comment from Janice N4 Nugs. Christmas party idea. Escape rooms. Great escaping leads can uh, can imagine you doing uh, like a horror one, then a podcast talking about it. That's a great, I'd write that down, George. I did an escape room once. It wasn't horror orientated, but like I was the reason that we didn't get out like half an hour before we should have, because it was like, they give you a code to open this thing. And you know, you have to try and guess if we had figured out all the clues and you got this code to get out and I'd put the code in wrong. <laughs> it was the right code. And then in the end, I had to come through the intercom and say, listen, you've got the right code. You, you. Over there with the beard. You, you just put it in wrong like 20 minutes ago. And obviously I wasn't. You with the beard. Very popular. You that. fucking idiot. Over the, over the telecom. Yeah. Speaking of Christmas parties, I mentioned it to, I spoke to uh, um, our friend, friend of the show, Damien Talks Money recently, because he's changed his studio and he was asking me like technical questions. And I said, oh. I wonder why it looks so good. Is that your, is your handiwork, yeah? No, he's got some other dude set it up, oh. but then he's like, then it, but, Long story short, he set, he set his, his uh, lens so wide that his hands looked massive. His, his eyes look even further apart. <laughs> <laughs> so he had this little tiny pea head and these massive hands, right? Which I, like, I thought were hilarious. And I'm trying to explain to him why it's like that. So then, But then obviously I started to take it piss out of him. Because obviously he said he looks like Sid the Sloth on, when he came on the show, didn't it? But then if you look at like a wider picture of Sid the Sloth... <laughs> If I can find he's it. He's got massive hands. He's got massive hands? <laughs> so he looks exactly like Sid the Sloth. He, he should have done that, pretend like that was on purpose, like he's committing to the gag. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Uh, but then he sent, I, said, I mentioned to him, oh yeah, you know, if we're going to do like a Christmas do, so you fancy it. You're, you're local enough. Fucking hell, we're des- that desperate where you're inviting people that aren't even involved <laughs> yeah, with the podcast. Then he sent me the, so like, bear in mind, we had this conversation and it was gone. Then hours passed. And then he sent me another, he sent me a voice now. Listen to this. I'm pretty sure that it, well, it's not offensive. Also, mate, definitely get me involved in this Christmas do. I've already ordered my outfit, so, you know, I'm coming whether you like it or not. <laughs> I'll just hang around outside the studios in Morley with my Christmas hat on until, until I see you coming you get out Christmas do. Do that long enough. <laughs> Again. So <there> you <laughs> no, I, 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 <laughs> 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 he knows I'm only joking. Um, ordered his outfit. Yeah, it's it fancy dress. So we fancy dressing it. Oh, fuck, no, oh. come on, man. No, come on. If he is, he can do it by all means. So yeah, we'll have to get, we'll get a crew together now. Yeah, yeah. He's probably the only guest we've had this year, right? How many more guests have we had? <laughs> I, I genuinely don't know. I've many guests, haven't we? Paul Smith. 
He's busy, isn't he? Having a fight. Yeah. Who else have we had? Who else we've had this year? It's been a slow year for the Breaking Red podcast. <laughs> Sister Beard won this year, was it? Nah. Maybe Sister Beard should come back. <laughs> no, What's come on now. Do, do the rounds again. Go back around. Con- <laughs> we have to concede that we, it's, not a, it's not a guest podcast, right? It's not one of those kinds of, of podcasts. We don't have the connections necessary. Ah, well. Um, what's the topic of today then, Adam? Um, I thought, weren't we doing George's like, uh, George has gone a whole, done like a whole news round ah. uh, project. Well, don't, George, don't, don't big it up. Don't big it up. It's like, if I, what's the fucking jingle it, for this? It's just halfway through. Dum, 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 dum. That. Oh. oh, that's it. <laughs> there is no jingle. That, 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 unless that, unless that, Adam that, wants that, to do one on the spot. Our response there sums up this podcth people listen to it. Fuck it, is that it? Oh. No, I don't know what it's called. It's just like the current affairs that current aren't that Current affairs. <laughs> nice. That's the one. Oh. You can tell you've not been gigging for a few weeks. <laughs> Losing your singing chops. Um, yes, yeah, so haven't you done like a, a roundup of, of things that happened this week that I've, aren't that serious? I've got three little stories. They're not all necessarily this week. I don't know when they were, but so the, the current affairs, they're not current, current affairs this, this month. Minus strike. This month. This one's <laughs> Friday, 22nd of September. So this one's recent. Uh, man arrested after free climbing London's cheese grater skyscraper. Did you hear about this? Was that free solo? So was it legitimately like he, he didn't just, have any wires on? Yeah, he just free Is it? It's it. not that guy, that shard climber, is it? Uh, I'll read it out. I, it's it's got to be. The there can't be two people that are insane enough to free <laughs> climb giant structures. I met him. Uh, a man was spotted climbing up one of London's tallest buildings before being arrested by the police. Bystanders filmed the man as he clambered up the, is it Leadenhall, Leadenhall building? Commonly known as the cheese grater on Friday morning, he appeared to have no safety equipment as he scaled the 225 metre tall skyscraper, 738 feet. Jesus Christ. Police, Arrested slash saved him. I mean, like, said the man was confronted by officers upon reaching the roof before being detained. So as soon uh, as he finished it, got arrested. What's the crime? Well, I don't know what it would... Uh, Rec- reckless endangerment of yeah. yourself. <laughs> yeah, a man has been arrested for aggravated trespass after climbing... Uh, that building, yeah. That's the craziest thing. I bet it's like a fucking 60 quid fine or something. Like, I bet it's not even that bad. Did he film it? Did he get it on the GoPro? At least, come on, man. Get it on YouTube. I don't know. There's people that filmed it from the ground. I got arrested. Yeah, and he could ask them for supplementary footage. Yeah, I've met this guy before. He's called Shard Climber. Uh, He climbed the Shard. But he does it... it, um, (laughs) No, no. it's not just a common name then. (laughs) But he did it like free solo. I've obviously been arrested. Did Did he? Oh, he didn't get permission? No. But like he just like, like climbs fucking um, wind turbines and but like with no equipment whatsoever. Yeah, he's just a madman. The w- thing about that, that I think f- it's so crazy. Yeah. It's like you imagine could just, you have, you I mean, could I just imagine you having a wank and this guy just rolls past your window. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> There's always a way that he brings it back to some kind of You're like, oh, fuck. It's got me to do with wanking. Because <laughs> um, I always think with that, like you could anything could happen. Like you could faint. You know, you get a little like an episode of syncope halfway up the the mountain. Pass out and that you, so that's it. You're done for what? Well, yeah, must just be like I think it's that adrenaline thing, isn't it? Like, seeking. yeah, like you can't. You, you it's a bit like what Paul Smith said. You know, you walk out into a stage of, of, of an arena, like eight thousand people screaming your name, and then you you want to, you're constantly chasing the dragon, aren't you? I feel like there's no adrenaline rush that I need that would involve me risking my life. I think you need an adrenaline rush. You think? Yeah, I think that's what you're missing in your life. Do you think Danielle would send me some nudes? <laughs> <laughs> more than, more than that's that Josh's wife. I'm only joking. I, I, I felt more like, um, I don't know, another live show. That's a, like, that, that gets the old blood flowing. You're pushing, I, it was a joke the first time. He said that about five times now, so I think he's been serious. It's, it's one of them where like time heals all, doesn't it? Like we got off stage and we're like, no. never doing that again. No, it's healed like a it. lot of things. But <laughs> I've still, I've still do you know what you should do? You should do an eating challenge. You know when... Then restaurants where you're suspended in the air, like really high up on top of buildings. In the one I'm in stuff. Dubai, like it's it's like a not a swing, but it's like you're suspended, really high. In what way you? How do you? How do you eat? So, so, so it's like a it's like a table, like a bench and stuff. And but you're hanging. From oh, something. I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. from like a crane. Your feet are dangling, and it's like that feels like it'd be a nightmare. Nightmare to squeeze. A nightmare. Nightmare to squeeze. Nightmare like film. Are you thinking about them nudes again? <laughs> <laughs> I think I was about to say the, ju- the juice ain't worth the squeeze. It'd be uh, super yeah. anticlimactic, wouldn't it? You'd be sat there. You'd be like, oh, I'm going up. You're up in the air. And then you'd just be, you'd just be sat there, just wind. Are you all right with heights? 
Yeah, I'm all right with heights. I'm not all right with falling from them. But I don't I'm, think anybody is. I'm not really that. I'm not scared. I'm not particularly scared of heights. I think that's something that Adam needs. Though. Like he just needs a bit of like a buzz, doesn't he? You know, like an adrenaline. Like, Jumping out of it. It's, it's just constantly at this level. level. Like it gets 10 million views on the video. And it's like, but I guess might just. That's the uh, Christmas do. We should organize a jump out of a plane. Fuck yeah. You, you no. should jump out. Of, I'm not jumping out of a plane. Somebody asked, actually offered if, to, for me to, they own like a company that does uh, pack plane or parachuting. Is that what you call it? I guess that's what parachute, you call it. Yeah. Yeah. A parachute. Skydiving. That's what I meant oh, to say. Okay. And he's like, oh yeah, you could do a video where you're eating something as you skydive. I'm like, Imagine Whoa. choking. <laughs> yeah, and I'm thinking of it as I'm flying towards the ground. <laughs> eating a burger, everything just flies out of it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you really thought it through. Um, but yeah, you'd never catch me skydive. I just, to me, it's like, I'd be like, oh, this is a nice view. Hopefully the parachute works. Yeah, you know, I think that's I feel like I can see the view from that's the, the thing, though, isn't it? You're like waiting for the parachute. I saw I saw somebody free jumping or like is it called like, like is it called free jumping? Free base jumping. When base jumping. Really yeah. I saw somebody base life. jumping off a cliff. It, 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 I, 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 oh, I went to a deep that. hole on like reels. And it's like it's a fairly chubby fella. And no, fucking let's call him Dave. And he runs and he jumps and you hear him go, Oh fuck. It pulls him back, doesn't it? No, and he fucking just jumps just and it didn't, it didn't like you don't see the ending. Apparently there's a video that shows you've from the bottom, but I don't Did know. If it's a, I don't know. I saw one where he jumps off a cliff and like the wind sort of pulls him back towards the cliff. So after he's jumped down, his parachute's fine and everything, but he just crashes into the cliff and he's like scraping his legs all the way down this cliff. I don't he's, need the I don't need the the buzz that much. You know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> Danny Mitchell. Do you know Danny Mitchell's okay on the podcast? His mate Rico, who's the it was the bare knuckle boxing champion. He got married in I don't know abroad recently. The day after his his wedding or the night of his wedding. Apparently, it was shadow boxing at like a cliff edge and fell off a cliff. <laughs> it survived. But you imagine you just got married and your poor wife. The bearing in mind, it's like, the start, <laughs> he'd be a good guy to get on the podcast. He was I'm, shadow boxing at a cliff edge. Yeah. What is this, like a fucking 1980s martial arts movie? You think he's like cock, <laughs> kick, cock boxer? Yeah, he said like cock boxer, kick cock boxer. Boxes. With Jean Claude Van Damme. Cock boxer. That should that'd be a good, you know, when they do those like take off pornos? <laughs> or like not really like shaving Private Ryan and stuff like that. Cockbox would be a good one. Um, yeah, I mean, why, uh, I'm glad he survived. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm mates with him, but like, I just can't believe that that's what happened to him. <laughs> it tells what happened. Well, shadow boxing near a cliff edge. <laughs> I fell off. Madman. Anyway, sorry, we've, we've sort of boycotted your. Uh... <laughs> Do you want to hear another one? Yeah. Okay, so this one. Uh, an influencer has broken down in tears after her act of kindness got rejected multiple times. TikTok content creator Amelia Goldsmith simply wanted to make someone's day by passing, uh, by paying for their groceries for the week. In her video, Amelia planned to walk into a Sainsbury's in London to surprise a lucky customer with her well-intended gesture. However, things took an unexpected turn. The TikTok influencer approached a customer at the checkout with her kind proposal only to be shut down immediately. <laughs> apparently she tried this on three different people and they all turned her down so she went back to her car and cried in a video <laughs> there you go uh, that, that's, that is a joyous, I put that one in I mean, there for Adam because I thought he'd appreciate me, that one very much so yeah that makes me uh, gives me a warm fuzzy feeling inside I think probably demonstrates I'm a bit emotionally broken but I like the idea that she tried to do something nice tried to do something nice and I'm sure it wasn't for attention or anything like that and uh, people caught, got wise to her, yeah. <laughs> Mike said, yeah, if she'd not been filming, you reckon? Yeah. That'll teach you. Can you, uh, can you make that into a reel, George, please? Can you overlay her video, <laughs> his laugh, and then... Yeah. That, that is like a perfect reel, that. <laughs> that, that, we, need not, that we need that out pronto. <laughs> Beard meets food, laughs at virally a TikToker. <laughs> She'll be like fucking Kensington or something, won't she, where they're like... I've got loads of money. Yeah, maybe you should pick the wrong place. Yeah. If you go, if you go the wrong that, suburb, did that around Morley, everyone's going to... Well, she did go to like a Sainsbury's. I imagine anyone who shops in there is pretty good for it. Yeah, you're picking the wrong place there, aren't you really? I mean, like... Yeah, it's not Netto, is it? No. Netto doesn't exist in England anymore, does it? But it does exist still in uh, in Denmark, I saw it. And Sweden. I think I saw one in the Czech Republic. No, Germany. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just, it yeah. failed in England for some reason. I think it was a logo, the logo was weird. N-E-T-T-O, grab a bag and off we go. Netto, remember that? No. I don't think that were their, um, I think that were our chant. I actually don't think that was like that their was official chant. chant. <laughs> yeah. You were at school chanting that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it was the logo. Remember the logo? It was like a dog holding what looked it like. Bright a, yellow, wasn't it? Yeah. God, we're showing his age now. Yeah. Your kids probably don't even know what Netto is. Remember, remember Woolworths? 
We've yeah, talked about this before, haven't we? Well, pick and mix was elite in there. Yeah, pick and mix going and buying your first CD single. Yeah. We let the dogs out, Baha men. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the days. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is all over the place, more so than usual. <laughs> We've got one more new story. You've probably heard of it. Doctors in Mexico City have conducted several laboratory tests on the country's most famous alleged alien bodies <laughs> as the controversy escalates. It's not at everywhere, then. What's the crack then of the aliens? Uh, it's still undecided yet. Um, but the uh, the news article says, since then critics have uh, continued to claim that the bodies have been repeatedly discredited as fakes by scientists and experts. I saw, um, I saw what's his name, that really annoying physicist, George, what's his name? We were talking about not long ago. DeGrasse Tyson. DeGrasse yeah, Tyson. Neil DeGrasse Tyson, yeah, who said, uh, he had tweeted about that saying, they're far too humanoid. <laughs> I kind of believe him. It seems like a feasible... Uh, yeah, because I feel like if it was... If, if they're alien, why would they be... Why would they not be, I suppose, the same shape as humans, roughly? But why would mm. they be? Why would they not be like a different shape? True. Yeah. Kind of, it kind of looks like that little one off Men in Black. You remember the ones that, that have coffee in... in Office. The ones with the voice like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the first one in black was a great film, don't you think? Then like all the sequels are terrible. You seen that new one with uh Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, that's so oh, no, man, that's appalling. I haven't seen it. No. I think Tommy Lee Jones was the glue holding it together. Absolutely. Have you seen there's a film called Turbo the Snail? <laughs> go on, George, sorry. Does it even sound real, that man? <laughs> sorry, go on Ch- yeah, go on, Judge. <laughs> the theory is uh the creations are made of animal and human bones joined together with synthetic glue. These in turn were covered with a mixture of plant fibers and synthetic glue to simulate a type of skin. So apparently it's pretty fake. Yeah. That's, that does sound so. quite fake, yeah. You don't, tell me you don't want to watch that film. I, I definitely don't want to watch it. No, I'm, I'll, I'll never watch it. Lynn's keeps trying to get me to watch That's, Barbie because she's I seen it. it is. Tilly cried. She cried. Was it emotional? You got a bit sad in between, and she's of that age where it was like, a, I'm like, is this like a PG 13 or something? Like, she cried because Snail had like lost its powers for a bit. I'm like, fuck it, I'll skip it. <laughs> Quick, skip it forward when, it, when something nice happens. Go on, what does Lynn want to watch? She keeps trying, I don't know why I mentioned it. She keeps, she's already seen it, but she keeps watching me. She wants me to watch Barbie because it's on like home premiere. Yeah, you can buy it. Have now, I told you a story about it? Oh, I don't know if I can say it, actually. No, please don't. Uh, what, we, just, we just move we on. Had a, Is we it had a joke? A, no, you told that. Hypothetically, if we had a, we if somebody I knew used to have one of those sticks where you could watch films. Oh, you could say that. Like, I don't care about that. Anyway, we, I thought you were going to say something really sexy. Paul, no. Paul Smith posted on his Instagram that he was watching his own comedy special on a dodgy <laughs> fire stick, so <laughs> yes. I think you're good. So when Barbie came out, I was like, oh, I want to watch it, so I can't try to find oh. This is all made up. I'll try and find it. <laughs> and uh, it, it said Barbie 2023, but the stick's old. Like we got our uncle may or may not have given us it. it anyway, so you press, I press Barbie and it, it, it was porn. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> I, I, knew, I knew that was coming. <laughs> but it comes on and there's this woman stripping. <laughs> like, fuck it, this Barbie film's class. She's like, get it off. And I couldn't get the remote to work. But when you press T- play- Till starts crying. Yeah, <laughs> till they want their ugly. When, when you press play, it like- Oh, when you press back, it goes back onto the menu, but like grayed out in the back is the, the film will carry on playing. Yeah. So there's a woman like stripping <laughs> off and I couldn't turn it off. <laughs> that never happened. I just made that story up. It does yeah. sound made up, but I believe it. Uh, yeah, so long story short, I'm not watching Barbie. I don't know how to go on to that. Right, so what's the premise of today's podcast? Tori Mike um, suggested something a few weeks back and then I forgot what it was, but luckily Adam can fill us in. <laughs> what actually happened is Tori Mike nicked an idea having watched... Uh, is it Ricky Gervais's podcast or the guy that he's with podcast? Somebody, some podcast that they do, right? right? The Carl Wilkinson a, thing. Yeah, it's probably a good podcast. If yeah, at this point, it wouldn't be a bad idea to switch this off and go listen to that if you want to. Um, <laughs> they, they don't do it anymore, it's fine. Oh, they don't? It's, it's from like 15 over. years ago. Yeah, it's from ages ago. Oh, is they quit? Yeah. Fucking yeah. quitters. Um, anyway. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm right there with them. Let's go. <laughs> so the idea was, essentially, if you were, you're going to start a new, uh, you're going to continue humanity, right, on Mars... Or a different planet, but let's just say Mars. An Earth-like planet, right? Elon Musk terraforms Mars, right? We're going there. So you get to start a new civilization of humans on Mars. Yeah. And you choose six people to to be the, the start of this new human race. The, the caveat, I think, is that they have, uh, or the condition is that they have birthing pods of some kind, because it's in the future, right? So you don't need to worry about procreation, Right, you don't need to worry about where the new humans are coming from. 
You're uh, just taking six existing people to, I, I suppose, form some type of government that you then start civilization. What's a birthing pod? What do you mean? Yeah, like, you know, like an alien, like they've got like pods of like embryos where they, they you know, they're making babies basically. With you. you don't need to worry about making babies. Do you put a bit of your DNA in there? To, like, no, no, that's already, that's oh, the I care. thought you did. I There's, thought we had to like, I thought we had to like start like tee people up. I worried that we're going to all be inbred after about 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's not, that's not right. a concern. And they've got, uh, presumably anyway, they've got uh, like medical and law enforcement personnel already there, right? So we don't have to worry about, because otherwise it's just going to be martial law, right? It's just going to be survival of the strongest. Mm. It's going to turn into a tyrannical regime very quickly. So I think they've got like, you know, and if somebody's dying, you can call an ambulance. But that, So the basic fundaments of society there, but you're going to take six people to form a government basically on a new planet. Okay. Let's put it that way. Yeah, That's probably the easiest way. I could have just said that at the start. Cool. Okay. I, I didn't have all that information given to me. I just <laughs> thought we had to like sort of go for it. This will be the entire cast and crew of Jacka. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Turbo the snail, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, who, who's going first then? Do you want to go first? No, you're going to have to go first because I just talked. Oh, okay, right. I, I talked so long, I'm now slightly out of breath. Well, I, I, um, I tried to like separate my... Uh, because I didn't know a lot about the, the medicine and whatnot, but I figured we needed like a survival expert. Oh, I've got some stuff. A on. medical expert a cook, somebody with some brains, entertainment or like athletic ability. So like these were my, these were my picks. Um, I, I guess right. so. For, for like first up. Are we going to do one each? Or like, yeah, I think that yeah. makes sense, doesn't it? Okay. Um, I thought like we needed somebody medical like to start with. Um, so my first medical choice was uh, Alex George. Do you know him? He's, a, he, he's like a YouTube MD, you know, but he's also the ambassador to the government uh, for mental health. Uh, it was on Love Island, famously. Oh, I think so. I think uh, so. I thought I'd put that last just so that Adam didn't write him off immediately. However, he's a practicing A and E doctor, um, and he's the yeah, he's the uh, mental health ambassador to the government. He was on Love Island. Uh, he does YouTube videos, uh, but he seems like a nice enough chap. And I figured a practicing A and E doctor is the man you're going to need if you if you go to another planet and it all and starts going to south. shit. Yeah, um, this guy. Yeah, that's the man. I think he's got a YouTube channel. Yeah. I think so. I thought he was just like an influencer, kind of. It's a doctor influencer. Let's have a look. <laughs> Alex George. The OG doctor influencer has to be Dr. Hillary Jones, surely. Is he still like, around? He's got, yeah, he's got 109,000 subscribers. Look. Who Dr. Hillary Jones or this guy? Uh, Alex George. All right, cool. Hillary Jones, I couldn't be. Uh, it was only, we were on my list because there's also on my. <laughs> he was on your list. He was like, he was like second. <laughs> but there's a new guy in there now, a guy called Amir Khan, not the boxer. <laughs> There's another doctor called a doctor called Amir Khan from Bradford. He needs does a lot of like the the medical stuff on telly now. Yeah. So there were them two, but then I was like this guy. I thought a bit younger. Well, we might yeah. need a mental health ambas ambassador if we all get a bit of a sad on up there. Yeah, <laughs> Especially yeah. if you come fucking out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, go speak to Alex. <laughs> so there you go, Alex so George. One. So that's the first one, yeah. Yeah. Is he like uh, kind of guy we could get on the podcast on that? Absolutely, he's way out of our reach, mate. How many subscribers we, we might get Amir Khan from Bradford who goes on Good Morning. I feel like it's the other way around, surely. How many subscribers does that 109, guy 109,000 subscribers. So we can't get him, but we get a guy that goes on the TV. Yeah. Nobody watches telly, do they? No, but uh, anyway. Um, <laughs> Say those who've just made a TV show. <laughs> nobody watches telly. <laughs> Fuck. You're proving yourself right, though, because nobody's really watching it. Um, uh, right, I've got first on my list. I had to think about this a little while, but... Um, Professor Brian Cox, television physicist, uh, also little known, well, I think it's probably a well-known fact, actually. He was the keyboardist in D-Ream. Ah. Some people don't know that. Lindsay didn't know that, actually. I, I told her that recently. I she not know who fucking D-Ream is. Well, anyway. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but not for that reason. I don't need a keyboardist on my new uh, planet. Um, but yeah, he's a smart geezer, right? Knows a lot about physics and maths, <sighs> mathematics. Fucking black your head on it. Well, no, because it's going to be useful. Also, has an ins this is the real reason, has an encyclopedic knowledge of human history, the evolution of uh, the universe, uh, which I feel would be important to, to, to bear in mind if you're going to start a new um, civilization on a different planet. You're kind of going to want to know, have somebody there, because they're going to be, you would imagine, some, some differences, maybe the level of gravity maybe, and... But like I said, it'd be, mostly it'd be important because you can tell you like, look, look, this is how life started. They'll put down some tomes or some old books <laughs> or whatever, and he can hand down the, the, the you know, the, 
gospel according to Brian. <laughs> I think that's, that, if, if you had that, if you had that capability, would you change the history? Would you just make like make some new stuff up? Uh, I reckon that's all that history is. You know, I reckon like there's a point where like the stories are just they make them as some of it's made up. Yeah, it's got. Well, to I be. think there's yeah, there's, the, the historicity of history is often like uh, debated, isn't Disputed. it? But, uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, I think I would take. I, I mean, I think he's a bit smug sometimes when I watch him on TV. Uh, I'm a bit like, yeah. So you might want to punch him in the face. Nah, you know, but like you don't want to bring loads of people with you that are all just the same as you, right? But no. If I write as a spice of life, so I think I could get along with Brian. Uh, and he's got nice hair as well. And uh, yeah, I think he'd just be a, a, a useful man to have around as well because he seems like, he obviously he's like a, did he go Oxford or something? So he's probably an intelligent geezer. <laughs> yeah, I think that he said, he got Oxford. Uh, Oxford or speak for your fucking self, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of history, the pyramids. Yeah. How do you think the pyramids were made? Um, by people, not by aliens. Let's just not get on it, man. It's but very- how could they possibly have done it <laughs> so long ago? <laughs> have you ever seen Kunk on Earth? No. At, on Netflix. No. Watch it. It's like a Kunk. Kunk. You know. If, uh, I don't want to Google that. It's, it's like this woman, and it's, it's like a documentary, but it's like funny because she's just asking stupid questions to historians and stuff. So she's like, <laughs> like Ali G used to with so, politicians. <laughs> kind of. I forget um, that you're young. Hers, Sorry, hers is like dead serious, but. Like the way she delivers it is so serious, but it's like it's jokes. But so she'll ask someone about the pyramids. She'll go, "How do you think they were built? Do you think they were built from the bottom up or the top down?" <laughs> <laughs> How could they have possibly done that though without the technology? What technology? Don't don't so think for it to be like because it's on um, articulated to true north. Yeah, yeah. So that parts, but they had like astronomers, I suppose, like um, back then to some degree. But like the actual building, you asked me how they built them, not how they were like articulated, but like how they actually built the structure. Yeah. Because they were they were forced to build them slave labor, right? Oh, yeah, but let's, let's forget drag- about slavery uh, for a minute, <laughs> and we'll just just the, the, like the, how do you build something like if the bricks are so heavy and you get into the top and like how tall are the, the pyramids? They're not that tall. They're like if that- you look at them in real life, yeah. But how without a, a crane, how are you going to get the last brick to the top? Like human labor, like. Yeah, but you need a lot of strong people. Yeah, they had lots of, like, thousands of slaves, man. I think we need to get somebody on this podcast who's an expert in this. I, I'm intrigued by, like, you know, conspiracy theories. and Because uh, it is, uh, the, the thing about, like, the whole, uh, its alignment with uh, the purpose for them and its alignment to uh, planets, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. that ob- obviously, that's that's interesting, yeah. up for debate. But how they were actually built, I don't think is that difficult to conceive of. Okay. We'll come back, we'll, anyway. we have to come back to this. Put this on the list of uh, potential podcasts because uh, I'm interested. I'm interested in. We fa- could get some like to- we could totally get some whack job like <laughs> conspiracy theorist on. I'm sure we could. I don't think you could tolerate it though. Yeah, I could. I'm like I'm not. I'm not know it all. I'd be, I'd be per- perfectly happy to hear their ideas. I would love to, I, if somebody's like if like a flat earther. I'd love to like hear it hear it out. Oh no, because flat earth's like one of those. No, but like you see, you're writing him off straight away. Yeah, but because it's like a dis a, a, something which is disproven. It's not. It's just nonsense, right? What are the conspiracy theories? What about that? Where Earth is on the back of a ter- tortoise? That's Terry Pratchett's fucking disc. I'm surprised you know that. Actually, I'm quite impressed. Um, that's <laughs> Terry Pratchett's disc world. Anyway, um, where the fuck are we going? <laughs> I like so, stuff like who assassinated JFK? It's totally, man. Tell me all day long who that was, yeah. right? Or uh, you know, like. Uh, even like ancient aliens and stuff like that, I can totally get on board. But things that you can disprove, like that the Earth is flat, I, I'm, that doesn't interest me because it's not flat. Right. Sorry. Put that on the list. Find a flat Earth uh, specialist. All right. So next up on my list, um, I figured we're going to have to eat whilst we're up there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I'm thinking we're on the same wavelength. <laughs> first time. Got, I, think first got time I think we've got different people, though, hopefully. Well, I thought, I mean, so if, uh, I believe I'm not so we both sat there last night. Danielle's doing real life work, and I've sat there <laughs> researching. <laughs> but before, I thought we had to like procreate. So she's like, I'm not fucking having this conversation with you. But I was like, she was like, if you're going to take somebody to cook, what about her that does all of like, him, her that's pronounced micro ave, <laughs> micro, and I went, Nigella. So Nigella. It, it, please tell me that the only female that you bring in is not the cook. Hey, don't be. So I was worried where that was going there. She's, she's a good cook. So Nigella was like on the list. Yeah. And I thought pretty good, but then she pronounces microwave, microwave. I think she does that as a joke. Though. Yeah. I don't, I, she, you know. I don't think it's serious. But I, I thought in my heart of hearts, if I'm going to take a, a cook to another planet, for pure entertainment and just everything else, I'm going to take Gordon Ramsay. Oh, I think I thought we had the same one then. 
So yeah, I, I good like, old God. Yeah, yeah, we like him now, don't we? I'm such. I've always been such a fan. And they brought back Hell's Kitchen as well. I saw it advertised yesterday. It's on like Fox or something in America. Oh, but couldn't be time better. That I, don't. I, I didn't. That wasn't good. <laughs> How good's that? That's, but, that? Maybe that video will be kicking over ten yeah, million. You never Hell's know. Kitchen's coming back, and I, I I watch that on repeat. You know, like because you can watch it on YouTube. Um, so like for me, Gordon Ramsay is the man. He's, a, know, he's, an, he's a super athlete as well. He does triathlons, Ironman. He's a um, super athlete. He's a super athlete. Super athlete. Um, he can cook very well. Played for uh, soccer aid as well. Played for soccer aid. It wasn't bad. It wasn't. Hand- it was. It was handy for some Did, he used, Didn't he used to be a professional footballer before he was? Were... He used to play football, I think. Yeah, yeah. In Scotland. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think he was a professional footballer. Google that, George. I'm come, gonna, on, come off it. I'm sure he was. He played for someone. I thought he played pretty high level. Yeah. Look at him, like shaking his head. Poor flat earther sat there. Five minutes in, you're like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Bit of elevator music. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> the budget's going through. Imagine what we could have, if we got a thousand pounds. Imagine what we could have done. Uh, did he used to be a professional footballer? Uh, oh my god! Which football club did Gordon Ramsay play for? Uh, da, 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 da. Are you on a different Google to us? He, he had an injury that ended his career. <laughs> so who was he signed uh, with before I'm this injury? To find it. Uh, <laughs> bloody hell get to the f- let's, point. Just, let's just assume that he's not he was he was brought up on the terraces of Irox watching Rangers uh, has he ever signed for Rangers uh, I'm gonna google it myself <laughs> this is a long Jesus Christ article. well he can't Jesus be then can he Christ. if it doesn't say oh you know he what he played for Oxford United and was spotted by a Rangers scout while playing a youth match <laughs> prompting his family I literally to typed in was Gordon Ramsay a footballer he played for Oxford United youth team and at age 15 was yeah, caught up by Scottish... I searched exactly the same thing. By I Glasgow Rangers and knee injury ultimately prevented him from... So, so no, but yeah. he played to a good standard as a youth. Sweet. Well done, Gordon. Is that it? <laughs> but the boy can cook, so you're on the team, Nigella. You're staying back. Oh, Nigella's staying home? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I, on the same... I'll, I'll do this. It wasn't next on my list, but I thought the same thing. We're going to need to eat, right? Because I can't cook. Sure shit. Like I can prepare food, but I'm not a great cook. We're going to need to con- continue uh, some long-standing culinary acquisition, uh, culinary, uh, you know, uh, traditions. The, 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 <laughs> I've had, I've had, I need more coffee, man. <laughs> We're too late this morning. It's too. This is what I told you. Peak, peak well, time. I need to like get my in. You know, I've got to drop the kid oh, off. Um, well, so mate. I'm bringing. Shut the fuck up. I'm bringing Ainsley Harriet with me. Ooh. Pure entertainment. Always got a smile on his face. Out? I don't know. He's not dead. Well, if he is, they've covered it up. Hey Siri, like, is Ainsley Harriet Harry still alive? Yep, still alive. Sweet, right? So Ainsley's <laughs> coming with because uh, he's always—he seems like he's always happy. I yeah. feel like the more positive people you have around, the better. I can't imagine he's ever going to complain when I say, "Yo, Ainsley, whip me up some grub, mate." He's going to be like, "Yeah, no worries, man." And uh, yeah, I think he's just—he's uh, just one of those dudes, right? That everyone likes. Yeah, well, I know. wonder why he's not on telly anymore. Uh, just maybe give Probably it don't in. want to do it anymore. Maybe he got that Probably much is. money. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, I mean, he's been on TV my entire life, pretty much. He must be... Uh, Taking a back seat. Yeah, maybe he's retired. He's kind of getting on now, isn't he? I guess. MBE. Is he in his 60s? 66. Yeah, man, like... 66 for shit? <laughs> What's that from? Uh, is it... Lady in the Tramp. I forgot myself. <laughs> it's the, you know, the beaver... The beaver oh, no. wants him to like, uh, wants to build a dam so the tramp. The I dog. thought you were doing that old guy off Family Guy or something. Yeah, I did as well. <laughs> Smell my finger, Jesse. <laughs> the paedophile <laughs> off Family Guy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, here's the Harriet. Yeah, good choice. Because um, like TV chefs, they can go one of two ways, can't Because there's that other guy, James Martin, who we were like, oh, we should get him on. He's been in, in some trouble recently for being a dickhead on set, hasn't he? Was he? Yeah, I saw, my mum loves him. Yeah, apparently he's, he, like there's some stuff come out that's like apologised because I think he's been rude to staff on set. Um, well, at least he's apologised. That, that's why he's not coming to Mars because he'd be uh, stressing unlucky, out. J- unlucky James, big Jimbo, you missed out. Uh, Ainsley Harriet then, all right. Uh, right, survival. Oh, fuck, man, we've got the same thoughts here. Go on. It's funny, actually, because as soon as we got to spoke to each other about it. So survival, we need a survival expert. I um, know it's coming. So I'm going to have to invent someone new. Not invent someone new, but choose someone new. Well, you, you, for me, you had your list of Ray Mears. Um, who are you bringing? Who just tells who you're bringing? Uh, Ant Middleton. Oh, fuck's sake. Well, I'm not coming this fucking <laughs> 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 I'm joking. No, go on. Tell us, um, tell us yeah, more. so, you know, we, we had Ray Mears, Bear Grylls, 
or I thought Ant Middleton because I figured like each like double bubble security and survival. Security? Yeah. What do you mean? What are you scoffing at? <laughs> so, who is he protecting you from? The fucking aliens. They're, they're on a, no, they're on a new, <laughs> a new planet fit for, for human well, There's three in habitation. Mexico. There's three in Mexico as, we, as it stands. No, go on. Tell me so, more about, tell me more about, if uh, like, other than the fact that he pays you loads of money, tell, tell me more about <laughs> why, <laughs> why Ant Middleton's coming to the, uh, the new planet. <laughs> He was a nice enough guy when we worked with him and I figured he's a former special forces operator. So he's going to be hard as nails. He can do a bit of PT in for us, get us in, in shape. Um, you know, Remy is, is not in shape and I don't think he's on telly anymore. Um, Bear Grylls, he'd just have us all drinking each other's piss. <laughs> so I figured Bear Grylls had come in. And Ant won. So congratulations, Ant Middleton. You're coming to the uh, other planet with me, Gordon Ramsay. And... The Love Island Doctor, <laughs> Alex George. <laughs> this island, this, this, why, I, why, why? I said island. This, this planet's looking a mess so far. I'm bringing, uh, I was on the s- same train of thought as you, actually. And originally I thought, I won't bring Bear Grylls because I don't want to say it was debunked, but I think people said it was a bit of a pretender, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, it would fake stuff. Um, so then I started thinking about Ray Mears as well. But I thought he's got absolutely zero banter. It'd be a little bit like talking to Damien Talks Money or something. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Cut that out as well, Josh. Send it to him. <laughs> I'm only joking. Um, so yeah, I, I landed on, I'm, I'm bringing Bear Grylls. You know why? Because again, he seems very affable. You know, you can't imagine Bear Grylls getting angry. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think he would force us to drink each other's urine. I think uh, it'd be an option. Yeah. And he'd know how to purify, purify in some way. Uh, but he's going to know a lot about uh, probably... In fact, I mean, his, his knowledge is really only useful on, on Earth, isn't it? So on a I new planet, maybe so, it wouldn't yeah. be that. But I, like I said, it's terraformed. Right? It's already ready, so we've probably got some some uh, Earth crops there. So yeah, Bear, Bear Grylls is coming. And uh, yeah, that's that's my third I like choice. It. I, I met Bear Grylls, actually. When we, yeah. Uh, yeah, when we passed out of um, Britannia Royal Naval College, Dartmouth, he was the ambassador for... I don't know, maybe like scouts or something, but it, it, I'm pretty sure he was a former Royal Marines commando. Um, so anyway, he came and did like a, he visited, you know, the, yeah. the military college, um, seemed like a nice enough guy. So I met him. Does seem like a nice fellow, doesn't yeah. he? Yeah. I like that one where he gets in the, the body of a yak. Is it a yak? <laughs> it kind of like just hollows out the yak. It's and like that like scene from uh, Ace Ventura, you know, when he goes into the, the rider. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's sighing the rider and he has to come out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, it's a really fond memory for that part of that film because my dad fucking hated Jim Carrey, like despised him. And I loved him when I was younger. And we went to, he took me to the cinema to see that. And he's just fucking deadpan the whole thing. He's like, this is not funny. Then that scene with the rhino happens and he cracks up and he's like pissing himself. <laughs> and I'm like, I told you, I told you. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. That's class. Who's next on your... Uh... Uh, see, uh, next up, entertainment. So this were a, a tough one. No, you haven't filled that out. I'm not coming. I bet you're bollocks. No, you're not coming on this island. I can't. I can only deal with you once a week <laughs> in the studio. Um, entertainment. So I went for... Because I, I thought we were going to be like having to procreate. So I thought we needed some good genetics. And, who's and I'm not coming. No. Who's a man that's in good nick? <laughs> procreate with you. <laughs> yeah. Um, funny... Can do it all really, and I thought Ryan Reynolds. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that. Deadpool. Yeah. Uh, he did some good, like uh, naughties, you know, like college films. Um, and I've I'm recently started watching that uh, documentary on Wrexham Football Club, which is it's like a it's quite a similar um, relationship that we have. So there's Ryan Reynolds, celebrity superstar, like global superstar. The other guy's famous as well, though. Yeah, Rob McElrenny. You put the, the, there's like what it see. I don't even know who he is, but what it seeds in it is like. Oh, the, t- the two new owners of Wrexham uh, Club have got, I don't know, let's say f- 50 million followers across social media, but the split is actually like 49.9 <laughs> 49. <laughs> 49. million. And that Rob's like fucking, that's me and you. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. So, oh, would you want to buy a football club? <laughs> we have to buy like, would have to buy to, Molly to buy, like, a yeah, Molly FC or something? <laughs> um, but that documentary is class, by the way. I'll yeah, be, yeah, it's really. I don't, I don't. I can't get like. I can do documentaries if it's a ninety-minute documentary. I ain't doing like a forty-part fucking series, man. Why? Because it's the story can't can be told quicker. You know Did what I mean? Watch like, the Arsenal all or nothing. No, I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing any of the football club ones because uh, it's it, they just drag it out too long. I, I don't need the. I need the facts presented to me in an unbiased fashion. Isn't it funny right? that Adam's like always in a rush to do nothing? Do you know, like, <laughs> not because I, you've, I you've got, got the most free time that I've known that I have anybody now. Are you fucking high? 
high. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? high? Most time. I don't <laughs> This you've got to do video. You've got videos up to the end of 2024. This, this cat's at Silverstone, like on the weekend. Oh, I think we're working. working. So, fucking working. Work. Tell me a favour. <laughs> seen your work, man. <laughs> yeah, we've seen my work. <laughs> Nine million views, George, in a week. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> I'll back you up. Fuck this guy. Anyway, you got all this free time in a rush to do fuck all. <laughs> like that is literally it. I've got to go for a, like t- today. We can't start filming at eleven. Like I'll be. He literally said in the message. Lad, I'll be over it by that time. At 11 o'clock, I'll be over it. Like, his, his peak window, what's your window of time between 8.30 and 9.30? Eight, between 8 and 10, I'm probably most <laughs> optimal at everything. Yeah. Can you imagine that being like, that's it? And you're not even filming anytime soon, so you must be like, you know, doing all right for your calories, bit of energy, coffee. Are you quite finished? Yeah, sorry. Sweet. Uh, so then next on my list is, uh, I think we're going to need a, a laugh as well. So... Uh, I'm bringing Stuart Lee, the comedian. I feel like this is going to be a, a short entry because I, I know Josh doesn't know who he is. Uh, but George gets a pass because he's young. Uh, not that Stuart Lee's old or anything, but like uh, he's quite like a deadpan uh, comedian, kind of quite politically orientated. Um, but I find him very, very humorous. And so that's kind of a selfish choice. I think he's going to need to give us all a laugh. I probably could have picked somebody a little bit more uh, universally appealing. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm, I want Stuart Lee along for the ride. Fair fucks. Uh, I, I mean, is this the last one then? For what was it? it was six? I was like two six. more, mate. Is it? Yeah, two, two more for me. One, two, three, four. Five, Ooh, I, six, I've had Ant Middleton, Alex George, Gordon Ramsay, Ryan Reynolds. All right, yeah. last one. Well, I, I only did five. <laughs> I can. I'll figure another one out whilst you're talking. Um, I thought as well. We need a bit of a laugh. Um, I thought it was the Ryan Reynolds. Uh, yeah, but he's, he's like twofold. He's a bit funny, but I think he's got script writers. But he's like, he's still half funny in it. So why is he coming? Well, why, why wouldn't you have to? Oh, for the good genetics. Good genetics. He's good looking. Yeah. All right, okay. Uh, Ricky Gervais. Yeah. That's, you know, famous for The Office, Afterlife, An Idiot Abroad, Extras. <laughs> I would like. His stand up shows are really funny. No nonsense comedy. I would like yeah. that guy. Would be I was great. never, I've never found The Office, I'll be honest. I think I'm. Uh, in a minority there, because I think most people love it, right? I, n- I never really, I, th- I find the, I don't, I don't really like that, but I find the US version of The Office more funny. Yeah. Um, but I I, even that, I don't find that funny. I think that type of comedy where it's like, you know, like it's cringe. Cringy comedy, yeah. I, yeah. I don't like that type yeah. of comedy. I get it, like cringe. it was, I think it was, it was, it was kind of pioneering for its time, but uh, yeah, I prefer it like a stand-up stuff and not that I've seen that much of it, but yeah. that and uh, I like that after, the idea that I've not watched it, that, you know, Afterlife, Afterlife. people keep telling me it's great. It I've just good. seen like, set piece gags about, you know, when he calls up ginger kid, something you shouldn't. <laughs> Chubby little ginger cunt. <laughs> yeah, something you shouldn't. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I like that. That's a cool one, yeah, man. Oh, I'm next, right? Yeah. Uh, so the, the most important thing, I think arguably the most important thing. Is this your last one or is this your second I, I had one? two more, but like. I can add, I can add some more on. Yeah. All right, second to last For one. the more on. So, <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I thought the, the mo- one of the most important inventions of uh, humankind, I think, is music, right? So I need a good musician. Again, we, we don't have to dwell on this. I'm bringing Connor Oberst, songwriter and uh, uh, musician of, uh, of, of Bright Eyes fame, predominantly, but did solo work and, with some other bands as well. Uh, like, I uh, suppose you'd call it folk. The original stuff was like folk, but I suppose then like more progressive folk stuff. But uh, I think he's a cool cat. And uh, again, he has nice hair. And uh, I, yeah, I'd bring him along with me to just kind of not serenade me, but you know, keep us all entertained by the campfire at night time as yeah. we're enjoying it. Ainsley Harriet's uh, <laughs> jerk chicken or whatever. I, forget, I don't know. Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, you reminded me when you mentioned the American office of what's the actor called that did Guardians of the Galaxy? Which one? Chris. Chris Pratt, the main Chris guy. Pratt, yeah. I think Chris. Is he in the office? Yeah, he was yeah. in the original office. Oh, was he? And he's been, in, he's been in that uh, Arrested Development, I think it was called. Or there were, uh, maybe it wasn't that called, but actually. So. There were another, uh, he was in some else. Yeah, he's been in a few of those like sitcoms before he became a movie star. But I figured like he seems like a really nice guy. Um, you, you see him, I think he goes to UFC a bit. I think he's, a, a, he's like deep into um, religion as well. Um, that's not something that I partake in myself, but maybe having a little bit of a spiritual dude there who can have a laugh. Uh, yeah, could maybe. actually be quite helpful. I like that idea, yeah. So I, I thought... Is, you want, didn't you uh, win... <laughs> Eating my beard after the first time. Um, I hope it's my beard anyway. Could be one of Danielle's pwebs. Fuck <laughs> me. 
Oh, he's going to town today, isn't he? Just because you came in and I was in a good mood. And he, did he start a fight with me when he came in? <laughs> Immediately. I don't know why I'm going to Daniela every time. I feel bad now. I like Daniela. <laughs> Luckily, um, she's like, this is being done. Listen, I'll watch this. Shit. <laughs> um, and <laughs> that, was good. that was really awful. I that. I'm sorry. Cut that, George. Um... <laughs> Uh, yeah, what we talking about? Oh, he, he always he wins that. I think like, they have like a nicest dude in Hollywood award or something, or nicest famous person award. Oh, does he? Yeah. I think he beat Keanu Reeves or something last year. Uh, who's also uh, often considered a really yeah, nice yeah. dude, which is nice. Um, so yeah, I, I quite like that. I like the whole spiritual element. Like you know, yeah, we need it. We need it, probably need a bit of that. Might if be you're, like starting from scratch on another planet. Yeah, it might get a bit a uh, bit miserable up there, right? Fucking hell, if you come. <laughs> well, I'm not coming, am I? <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm, uh, I'm assuming I haven't made you all this either, so. Well, I figured we were kind of going together. Oh, like, shit. Uh, you, it's, you a need, it's a 12 you man pod. Look, to be fair, it's a bit of a fucking sausage fest, in a minute. Lad, if we're, if we're going to Mars, <laughs> you're vlogging it, right? I'm getting, we're getting like, get your media PLC. <laughs> Uh, we can get your weedy, media. Get uh, your weedy. We've got to grow it back over there. <laughs> Anybody want to buy some bud? That's how we're going to fund this thing. <laughs> we're, we're, you're coming along on retainer, vlogging everything, yeah. so we get loads of views on YouTube. No, I'm joking. I just enjoy the solitude, I think. Yeah. Uh, my final addition was... Uh, was um, I thought it was necessary because we're going to a, a new planet, right? We need someone... It's a bit like Lord of the Flies, right? We don't want anyone to kind of get power hungry and start some kind of tyrannical regime. So I'm bringing, I, I, was, I, don't, I never really know how to say her name. I think it's Malala Yousafzai, uh, who was famously, uh, as a child, she was shot in the head by the Taliban while she was on a bus. Um, she's now like a, a, a you know, like, a, I guess a human rights ambassador. She uh, does a lot of uh, work uh, appealing for the, the education of, uh, of women in countries where it may have been banned by some awful regime jesus um, christ uh which i know is kind of heavy but i thought she would keep us on straight and narrow like for uh, uh in terms of maybe uh, a sense of altruism does she speak the, english she's yeah she's 26 years old and she won the nobel peace peace prize in 2014 at the age of 17 mm. uh, she's from mingora in pakistan whoa yes yeah, so i'm bringing her along just to kind of give us a sense of uh yeah Direction, right? Like, if, if uh, I don't know, Ainsley Arrow goes mad with power because everyone <laughs> loves his food, I don't want him to turn into like some uh, some autocratic tyrant. Malala's going to say, Listen, Ainsley, yeah, do us a favor, yeah, just go have a word with yourself, make us some cheesecake, and then come on, <laughs> we're all in this together, kind of thing. Wow, what a very honorable uh, mention there from Mr. Adam. I, I, I don't think yeah, I've done. got any more, me. I think I'm done. No, off the top of your head for you. You're not one. bringing Johnny Knoxville? No. No, I'm not. Steve-o. Is there any... Nah, his voice is annoying, isn't it? Don't you think? I he's got like a problem all, with his voice. I think they're all really annoying. <laughs> is there any women part of your group? I don't know, you're sexist. The only, the only, only one he considered was Nigella to cook. What a bastard, eh? <laughs> <laughs> women, get down in the comments and let them know what you, what you think about that. <laughs> Look at him like pushing it on me now. Like, uh, I don't know. I don't. I, I didn't. I dare put any on the list because I was like, right, it, when Danielle was there. So I just like went, let's just stick to guys for now. So no, uh, I'll probably take Sister Beard actually. She's all right and full inches, so she'll be entertaining, entertaining for us all. Yeah, but. she's got plenty of free time now as well. <laughs> <laughs> Less said the better on that, I reckon. Um, what's next, Georgie boy? She finished on some fessels. Let's go. It's time for a fessel. Look, he's over it. You can see he's over the hill. 1201. 12 I was over this at 1101. <laughs> Okay, so someone actually uh, sent this to Josh on Twitter, or X, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is a fair soul. Yeah, if I, you find any, uh, feel free to send them to us yes. on social media. Probably not Adam. <laughs> Don't send them to me. Send them to me. Unless you want to get blocked. I know that my husband recently paid £150 to have sex with a prostitute. I'm fuming, but I legitimately cannot think of a way to tell him I... Th uh, to tell him I know without disclosing that my sister works at said brothel. Bastard. <laughs> Heavy that, innit? 150 quid. I, I always kind of wondered what, how much you have to, like if I, have, not that I ever would, but if I ever paid. Always wondered. If I, you know what, I always thought like if I went to pay, if I decided I wanted to pay for sex for whatever reason, what would, I wouldn't know if I was being overcharged or undercharged, you know? Yeah, what's but, the going But like rate? if I go to a mechanic, I suppose, same thing. I don't know, like, I, is that cheap or expensive or what? Any sex workers? Let's know in the comments. I bet you could spend like thousands. I bet like 
You probably could, but, but like it's like buying luxury items. But as I mean, well. what's like the average? Google that, George. <laughs> Maybe don't give me that. What's the average no, cost no. of a prostitute in Leeds? <laughs> 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 You'll get all the spammy things. Grab yeah. a granny in your area. <laughs> like his phone starts blowing up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, that's pretty bad. That. That's good, but I can who see who that said happening. that? Can you give him a shout out? Ryan Drinkwater. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, he does that. Yeah, he comments quite a lot on uh, on Twitter. Does old Ryan Drinkwater? Thanks for that, Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Just Ryan, yeah. Uh, another one. Uh, me and my partner had sex one night safely. I threw the condom on the floor in a pile of clothes that then went into the washing machine. Her dad cleared the washing machine to find said condom floating around in the drum of the machine. He asked if we were washing them to reuse. <laughs> <laughs> but they're it's reusable, though, aren't they? What condoms? No. Are? Yeah. No. What? Are you ju- That's why that would be a joke, lad. You've got to. What? <laughs> They're reusable. Yeah, like when we played rugby, like we just. Like, I don't know where this is going, right? <laughs> Red one. Probably, I reckon you just shit. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> yeah, he used to rinse it out. Here you go, lad. You have a go. <laughs> <laughs> they can't be re- reused and certainly can't be shared. <laughs> oh, my God. The team condom. <laughs> why, would you, why would you hide the condom on a pile of clothes? That's a concern there for me. Yeah. Uh-huh. If your dog gets it. Imagine that, that'd be a bad deal, wouldn't it? If your dog swallows a condom, you've got to take it to a face. <laughs> Look at his face. So it's, it's amazing how we lost that brand deal, mate. Amazing. Yes, I can't believe we haven't we aren't got one. Okay, this one's less filthy. Uh, I'm a secondary school teacher and there's a group of lads that hide their vapes in the ceiling tiles in the toilet block. Twice a week I sneak in there and take them. Haven't paid for a vape in 18 months. <laughs> It's probably illegal, but uh, yeah, it's sweet, man, yeah. You would though, wouldn't you? If you were a teacher and like you had confiscated some stuff, like cigs or whatever back in the day, you'd be like, if you smoked, you'd have it. If you smoked, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, final fess hole. Whenever I want to have a wank, I convince myself I have to play a game of Wordle. And if I don't get the word, I'm not allowed to have a wank. <laughs> Not had a wank in fucking months. <laughs> That'd be like me, that. Yeah. Bastard. <laughs> did, you, did you send that one in? <laughs> That's a good one, that George. I like that. The only first song I've actually liked, I think. Uh, <laughs> if you like it, if you like it, anyway, shut the fuck up. Is that it? We done? <laughs> How long are we running for there? An hour. An hour? We've done it. I know. We've 50, come, 59 we've... minutes too long. Do you enjoy it? You, no? Well, feel free to not let us know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> are, we, are, we got, are we doing anything next week? No plans. You've sent a lot of ideas into our little. I have. Chat I'm, not, I'm not privy to this chat. No, there's I'll a separate you keep, chat. You keep me out for a reason. Yeah, keep it's not even a chat. It's just me and him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep you out of it. Just you shouting at George. Just let you turn up and. Uh... But no, that's it. I think we'll, we'll, we'll get some more ideas down for next week. And uh, thanks for everybody for listening and watching and supporting. Uh, we've had some good numbers recently Cheers on the old you, saw, YouTube saw, channel. I saw one that had done like, which was a frankly, it was a shit episode. <laughs> shit of the most one. It had done like seven thousand. Yeah, yeah, last well, week's... It, was, is, it wasn't like a... You know, the idea was not particularly yeah. interesting. I think last week's has done about 9,000. Yeah. It? it was complete nonsense. Well, thank you very much for watching. Just cashing in on the Gordon Ramsay. That's why. <laughs> you think that's it? Nah. No. There's no, there's no like discernible no, link Rob. between my YouTube channel and this podcast. No. Nah. Like, I've got plausible deniability. Like, if you say anything bad, I could be like, well, look, I'm just an employee. <laughs> You've said all bad stuff this, this episode. Anyway, smell y'all later.